Hi Gemini, welcome to your November 2017 love reading. It's Raina here. As you can see, I have laid out the cards. I <laughs> I got about eight minutes into the reading and I just felt like I was babbling. So I'm going to kind of collect my thoughts and do this all over again. But uh, I wanted to let you know that I have a new deck that I'm using this month. It's called Crystal Visions Tarot by Jennifer Galasso. And um, it's, it's something that I was commenting just now. It's kind of one of those decks that you have to, I think you kind of have to know what the cards represent already to make the most of it. However, I also noted that even with the classic Rider Waite deck with illustrations by Pamela Coleman Smith, you can't automatically know what each card means by looking at the picture. So either way, I guess you do have to bone up on uh, the meanings of each card if you're interested in doing this sort of thing. So um, I'm just going to begin. This is for the month of November. Obviously, it's a general love reading. Um, this is the focus or the heart of the matter, the Seven of Cups. This is a card of having a lot of options available to you. In some cases, this could indicate that you are confused about making a choice, possibly be because there are more than one, there is more than one person involved. And maybe you've been kind of maintaining multiple relationships. Some people do that. And even when I have private readings, sometimes people have more than two people that they are interested in. And they say to me, which one is the best one for me? And a lot of times I, I say, I don't think any of them are because you wouldn't ask me that question if you had a very strong connection with one of them. People are not interchangeable. And when you lock into somebody's energy and it's very, there's like a, it's, I was going to say it's very immediate, but I don't know if that it's so much that as it is so, it's like a piece of the puzzle. It doesn't, there's not like this feeling of not understanding that person. There's, there's just like this affinity for that person. And I don't think that we have that with any, you know, Tom, Dick, or Harry that comes along. I think it's it's very specific to specific people. However, you know, maybe that's just the way that I approach relationships. Maybe some of you are much more open-minded about what you consider to be qualities that you resonate with. So I can't, you know, make some pronouncement like I'm just like totally knowledgeable about this, but that was just my two cents. In the past position, we have the five of pentacles, this kind of lack consciousness, this kind of fear-based mentality that there's not enough to go around. And in relationships, yes, Suri Bob, that happens where people are very easily feeling a sense of urgency about, oh, I have to have somebody in my life. Even if they, let's say they're married and they're getting divorced, they can't, they can't seem to break up with somebody without having somebody waiting in the wings because of that feeling of, I can't be alone. I have to go, anybody who shows me interest, I have to go with them because what if nobody ever shows interest after that person? So the Seven of Cups is like, Choose wisely because something may look good on the surface, but it may not be what you think it is. And there's like a sense of confusion. Maybe there's a sense of being with some Gemini people of being kind of unmoored, if you know what that means, like being without, rudderless, being lost at sea for some reason. And it could be because you have had a breakup that you shattered your self-confidence. Maybe, maybe you were left by somebody else 
and you saw it as some kind of indictment against you. I think I was talking about this in another for another sign, but I was saying, what if you were to flip the script, and if you were the one who was quote-unquote dumped, you were to say, I dodged a bullet, and, and to look at it as something positive instead of as something that reflects badly upon you. And I, I, yeah, I was talking about another sign, and I think I said something like, you know, a lot of people don't even, they might not love themselves, and they might not be able to accept being loved by somebody. And so instead of dealing with that themselves, they just go towards relationships that are actually bad for them. And they do that so that they can prove that they are, unworthy and if you show that they are worthy they may even get angry at you they may treat you badly because you're kind of um, countering their their belief system and that can be threatening to some people so it's all about the way that you look at things right now there's um, the six of pentacles in some cases if you're Getting divorced, if this is just like looking at it from the most um, literal point of view, you may be receiving the proceeds from some kind of a divorce settlement. Maybe you're splitting up your property and things like that. And so you're still going through the motions of some kind of a breakup. It can also be that you are, you're in a better place in a way that you're seeing that you have the the value that you deserve to be given what you give to others. And it's not a tit-for-tat situation, but it's simply learning from past mistakes. You're seeing more clearly when other people are not wanting a, a fair relationship and you're not going to settle for less. But it, it, it's kind of like interesting because I think that Seven of Cups, it for some people could simply mean that you have a lot of options available to you. Maybe there's, you're coming into a period uh, of a lot of um, potential partners. It's, it's interesting. I was thinking about uh, Jupiter because Jupiter is that kind of an influence that would give you more of something and you still have, oh, well, <laughs> it's funny, I was going to say, you still have Ju Jupiter in Libra. Uh, but actually, as I record this, Jupiter just went into to Scorpio. But remember, too, that everybody's chart is going to be different. So uh, there could be some kind of um, Jupiter. If you're, if you're watching this for your sun sign, uh, the astrological part could be totally different. Uh, because it would be based on your rising sign and... And anyway, not to not to get go off on that tangent, but I just want to say that this doesn't have to be something that is occurring in November. This may have just been a past influence that gave you a lot more uh, potential partners than you usually are used to. So you maybe in the past year you've had more options, and and even though you've had more options you realize that it's not a matter of quality, quantity, it's quality. So that, that is what that Six of Pentacles may be teaching you. This could also be a person that's coming into your life that's an earth sign or has a very earthy demeanor. So we're talking about Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Higher message is the world card endings, a uh, chapter ending in your life. And um, sometimes this can be, if you have any plans to travel, this could be, a, um, as a spiritual message, this could be, this is where it all happens. This is where you find a, a partner is in a far-flung location. So just wait for that. For other people, it could be that this full moon in your sign, which is happening on December 3rd. Now, obviously, it's beyond the the dates of this particular reading, but it might be coming up in the future. 
that that's going to be some kind of an ending for you, a chapter closing in your life, and that will usher in new beginnings, obviously. When something ends, something else comes into being. So your love life might be affected by that. But for some people, you may meet somebody on a vacation if you're planning to travel or maybe you're working in a foreign environment. What crosses you is the Eight of Cups. So this is another card. I got like um, the World card the and the uh, Eight of Cups uh, talking about, this is also a card of like leaving um, endings in that sense, maybe endings of a relationship, leaving what no longer serves you. But it is in that challenge position. So it could be that something is still remaining that has to be dealt with. Maybe you have not made that final move. The, the world card, as a spiritual message, is like saying, close the chapter, perhaps, for some people, that you have to tie up those loose ends so you can move on. The, the world card is the last card of the major arcana, so it's like the final. You start out with the fool, and you end with the world, okay? And so, have, do you have any uh, loose ends that need to be tied and dealt with before you can truly move on? And that, with the love reading, obviously, we may be talking about relationships that are all over, but for the shouting, but maybe not officially over. And... Um, there was something else I was going to say about the Eight of Cups. Well, you know, and it could be because we have the Seven of Cups as the centerpiece. So this could be like a Pisces person. I'm thinking the Eight of Cups I associate with Scorpio. Possibly, maybe that's a the timing issue. Yeah, I was thinking about that as well. Uh, because most of the month is Scorpio. The sun is in Scorpio. But then at the, the full moon... On November 4th, some places I think it's November 3rd, but there's going to be a full moon in Taurus, okay? So for you, that is your 12th house. So again, you know, that's a perfect example of that chapter ending before you have, um, the, you know, and this is like in kind of a subconscious area. And then you have like a very conscious ending with your basic sense of self. And that can be the, it's, it's really weird because it's a full moon in your sign. So you'd think it was an ending, but in a weird way, it's a beginning. Because it's in the first house. So perhaps some of you are resisting change for whatever reason. For other people... It could be that you don't want to leave a relationship, even though you know it's uh, not serving you. Again, with that Five of Pentacles, there may be like this feeling that is sticking to you or with you that you need this person in your life. There could be some kind of um, a Pisces person involved. And Pisces is a mutable sign like Gemini. So it forms... A challenging aspect called a square but I find in my own life that oftentimes we attract these types of uh, angles relationships with people with these angles because it's like the f there's friction there's different ways of seeing things but there's also this undeniable attraction to this type of a person I see this a lot with romantic relationships And yet that person may be basically incompatible with you. The advice of what's coming in is the, the lover's card, and this is your card. This is connected to Gemini. This can be having to make a choice. I suppose some of you may be dealing with two relationships. They say Geminis love to do things in pairs. 
So whether it's like having two jobs at one time, having two relationships at one time, anything. Um, oh yeah, it's interesting. I want to look at the outcome. And I was going to mention the outcome is the hermit. Um, the hermit is connected to Virgo. So when I was talking about earth energy, I was going to say that Virgos um, also form a square to Gemini. So I can see of all the earth signs that some of you may be involved with a Gemini person. Maybe if you're choosing between two people, you end up choosing a Gemini person. And actually, <clears throat> you Gemini gets along well with Virgo, relatively speaking, in terms of um, uh, being an earth sign, because um, you're both ruled by Mercury, so you have that intellectual connection. And, um, and you know, it's funny. I always think it's strange when earth signs and, and air signs get together, but you're, one thing that you have in common is being detached and not approaching the world from this kind of emotional or whatever you want to call it point of view and trying to be more logical about things. And so you may appreciate somebody like that if you're involved with a, <laughs> if you're trying to choose between like a Pisces or a Virgo, the Virgo person may seem to to be more emotionally um, on an even keel. And the, the, the Pisces or some other water sign may seem to be too, too sensitive too, too um, subjective about their life, where everything is about them, about their experiences, and they can't, they don't have a more objective point of view, and that can kind of rub you the wrong way, because you can, you're perfectly able to see different viewpoints, and you're not the kind of person to get hung up on your own little uh, tragedies or what have you, yeah, and that's a that's totally broad brushing it. I'm sure some of you, especially if you have a lot of uh, cancer energy and things like that, you may be a little bit different than that. But basically, I'm trying to figure out why you would like a Virgo person, and I think you would because of certain uh, meeting the meeting of the minds. But the other thing too is you may be deciding whether or not you want to commit to somebody and you decide to go it alone. Okay. So it's possible that you've even gotten, maybe somebody has, has, is wanting to you to marry them or move in with them. And it's kind of like, um, bothering you because Gemini really loves its freedom. And you may care for that person dearly, but you don't really want to lo lose your autonomy. And I think that some of you are going to decide to, like, at least for the time being, go it alone. Maybe just think about it, chew on it, and not make any decisions at this time. Okay, Gemini, wow. These cards are having a real effect on me. I'm kind of going into a zone. So I hope that um, I didn't lose many of you. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, I hope some of that at least resonated. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have a great November. Bye.